What's going on there, YouTube? Wes and Cameron here today from Retro Vapors. Uh, we are in the Northwest Arkansas area doing some vape reviews and showing some local stuff. And also Cloud Comps. Uh, behind the camera is our friend Chandler. What's up? Um, uh, today we're going to just do a basic introduction of how everything goes down here, what's around in the vaping scene down here. Um, today we're showing off uh, one of our local shops, the Velvet Vapor. Uh, they are located on uh, West Walnut out here in Rogers, Arkansas. Um, a couple things to talk about, you know, battery safety and items and things like that. Things to do and things not to do in the vaping community. Uh, it's going to be part of our introduction video today, kind of give you guys a brief background on what, uh, what kind of needs you need to know about when, when getting into vaping, first of all. Um, Velvet is a really good shop. I get all my supplies there, and pretty much what I'm working today is going to be my Wismac RX200. And today I'm going to be working on a couple of different things. I've got a custom styled uh, faceplate switched RX200. Uh, I've got a couple other things back here. I've got a DNA200 with a TFB4. Uh, one of our local guys, Rage Box Mods. Shout out to Rage Box Mods. Uh, down in Springdale, Charles, Kevin, love you guys. Yeah. Also, I'm gonna be um, supporting. I'm um, shouting out Beat to BCM, Great Mall Company, Great RDAs. Love them all around. Met them while I was up in Joplin three months ago. Not three months ago. Uh, Bacon, three. Bacon. Yeah. Really awesome dudes. Shout out to them. Uh, uh, so we're going to kind of dive straight into this here right here. A couple things uh, for some experienced vapors and some non-experienced vapors. Uh, a couple things, you know, when you go into the do's and don'ts. Um, when it comes to basic battery safety, uh, a couple things you want to make sure you look at. Um, most batteries and mods that we use here as a drip community are 18650s. Uh, these are Samsung 25Rs. Um, also, there are 2650s for your bigger set of batteries. They're a little bit bigger than a diesel battery, would you say? Give or take. Yeah. Uh, the basic difference between is longer battery life, um, and you do get a little bit more power out of them since it's a bigger cell battery. Uh, a couple different things about it as well. Um, you know, when it comes to when it comes right down to it, um, and battery safety and some of the issues you need to look at. Uh, so battery safety and certain things that these are. Um, basic mechanical mods and some of the newer updated mods like sub tanks and other items like that, such as these, take this battery. This battery is called an 18650. Uh, this is a particular battery brand. Um, and what this is, is it uh, needs to, this is you get your negative end up here and your positive end up here. The basic way to tell the difference is you have more um, of a flat space on the bottom where you have uh, a positive style connection on the top. Um, this is your basic, you know, and when it comes down to it, with certain different types of devices, you need to watch uh, certain things called your amp limits. Um, most sub-ohm styles are going to require about 25 amps or more, you yeah. know, minimum. Um, the higher amperage you go, the more you can push out of a mechanical mod. Um, and there's a couple different things about that. There are a couple good brands I'll list off, such as uh, Samsung 25Rs, Sony VTCs, um, LGs have always been a good battery, uh, and Velvet, which is where I work, we carry a certain battery called a Cloud Chaser. It's um, a 40 amp battery, so it's pretty high up there. There's one running into this VCM. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, what he's got in his hand is called a mechanical mod. Straight raw power, Nothing special to where it's adjustable. You push the bottom of the button and it fires. Other mods, uh, as you go farther into it, uh, are unregulated mods. Yeah. Uh, this is called a Rage Box. It's made down here by the local guys, uh, Charles Long down in Springdale. Um, and what this is, is with his took a single 18650. This guy is a dual 18650 and it's running parallel. So you always need to make sure that your negative side goes on the bottom and your positive side goes up. Uh, the good thing about having dual 18650 is what it is is it gives you longer battery life and allows you to build lower limits safely with uh, being able to keep your amps in limit. 
especially when you get down to you know the point three and point two range. Yeah. And the good thing about these guys, you know, uh, is they come MOSFET protected, which allows you to build down to a certain limit safely within the battery limits of the mod itself. Um, these take, like I was saying, dual eighteen six fifty with longer battery life, higher amps, gives you more of a safe zone to build lower. Also. Um, <clears throat> Um, they also make series box mods, 186, um, 2650 box mods, and also they do triples, parallels, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> I don't have mine on me, I'll back at home, but it's a series box mod. Uh, also on regu on regulate on top of that. <laughs> on the topic of unregulated, this is a unregulated VCM stacked 18650. The reason why it's called a series is because it's two batteries stacked on top of one another. Uh, on top of one another. Now, with this particular mod system, we do not recommend that you guys use this for a basic user. Mm -hmm. It's recommended for a high, a highly advanced user. And the reason that is is because most mods that are series, you don't stack batteries on top of. VCM, who's uh, which is the name of the mod, uh, made by Vapor Clouds, have found an efficient way yeah. to go ahead and make this device safe to use for an advanced user style. Vapor Clouds. Um, other types of mods that are out there are regulated mods, uh, like we were showing in the beginning of the video. Uh, these are a couple of them. CLA 150. It's a base 150. And then you have some of the higher end mods, such as these. Uh, he has a Vapor Shark, Shark DNA 200, watt full battery, great. Overall, so far, how long as I've had it, I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, other mods such as these, these are Wismex, uh, Wismex newest and latest greatest. These are triple eighteen six fifties, and this is the, this is the RX version, and it's a triple eighteen six fifty system. So it has three batteries running series. Uh, the limit that you can build these guys down to is point one. Uh, up to 200 watts. Now it does something called temperature control. What temperature control is is you can build <coughs> you only can use nickel, titanium, and stainless steel. Is that right? 316L stainless steel. Yeah. You do not want to use canthol. If you use canthol on temperature control, you can fry your motherboard like that, and the mod will be not useful. This is a Segelli 150TC. Also, so another good temperature control mod as well. Um, I'm not rocking temperature controls today. Um, I've used temperature control coils before in my past. And the thing about temperature control as well is it's honestly, it's a love or hate relationship. Yeah. If you like nice, thick, dense clouds, which you need, you're probably not gonna prefer temperature control like myself. Uh, I really don't care for it. It's I, a great idea and I yeah. love the thought behind it, but for someone like me, it's something I'm not really keen into. Same here, I'm not a big thing on it. Um, now, if I'm using a sub tank, which he, my buddy has right here, they're really great. In all his opinion, if you're going to use, if you don't want to drip and build a nickel coil, and whatnot, just buy a pre-built coil for your TFE four, which I highly recommend uh, right now mm -hmm. for a sub home tank. Come in, come in nickel. They have, uh, as far as I know up to date, they have a couple different coil options. They have a .15 quad coil a 0.2 triple coil, a 0.35 Clapton coil, a 0.4 sextuplet coil. Um, they've also got all kinds of different new coils coming out all yeah. the time. Nickels, rebuildable Clapton, yeah, uh, titanium coils is from what I've heard from a couple other people out there. Um, I mean, it's a great RVR sub tank. I have one back home. I mean, you can get clouds just as a dripper like that off of that. They also, um, the only thing, the only, the only bad draw I have to it, he, he will agree to me, it drains juice fast, right? Temperature control, typically, yeah, well. Oh, no, I'm not saying temperature control, I'm talking about the tank itself. Well, drippers as well. Yeah. yeah. Most drippers and, and most sub ohm tanks are going to go through battery a lot faster. Uh, batteries and juice as well. Yeah. Um, typically faster than your traditional tanks such as your Nautiluses, your Mini Pro Tank 3s, your Aspire K1s, all kinds of stuff like that. And the reason that is is because since you're using more juice and a higher powerful coil, you're going to have to have more juice to sacrifice for that. Mm -hmm. And doing so though, you get more of a flavor hit, more of a juice hit, or more of a nicotine hit, and more of a different style of hit. Um, 
there's tons of different options out there, you know, when it comes to different kinds of tanks, and we'll get into more of that later. Um, there's also different types of sub tanks. There's a basic by yourself and coil ones, and it he has something the, called the ARTA, which is made by BCM, called VCMT. Love it. I've had it for about two weeks now. Um, Holds 12 mils of juice. This is a 30 millimeter size. Correct. Uh, top fill option. Top fill. I love it. I don't. I have had K funds. I've had Wemos. I've had. I forgot what I've had. Buddhas. Buddhas. Or there's tons of different ones up there. There's Orchid V2s, Deuce, 3, 4, 5. Now the V3, 4, and 5s, if I remember correctly, were actually made as a clone. Orchid had stopped their latest production of rebuildable tanks at the Orchid V2, if I remember correctly. But back to the topic of Capon, I heard a rumor today that Capon is coming out with a new one. Are they? Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. We'll see what they do with that. But um, if you want an RTA, I highly recommend the BCMT. It's not for beginners. I won't say that off the bat. I've been vaping for f three years now. And uh, I'm hitting three years here a little while soon as well. But the, the only issue I have with this thing, it leaks. It will leak on you. Mm -hmm. If your cotton is not stuffed in there correctly. Right. You have yes. to use a lot of cotton. Mm -hmm. Very so. Very true. Um, and the thing with rebuildable tanks, you know, especially with ones like these, um, you can get more of your dripper style coils built inside of it, whereas K-Funds, Limos have a smaller deck style um, and give you different types of vapes in doing that as well. I mean, your one right in here is 24 gauge, I believe 12 wrap, I can't remember if it's so long. Um, it's basically it's meant for a series build. I'm running it at 75 watts, kicking and created decent clouds with it. Um, and also, I mean, there's tons of different stuff out there. A lot of people, you know, and there's a lot of dilemma right now. There's stuff out there called, uh, and I'm going to get this right in the bud right now. A lot of people are talking about this new study out there called uh, about formaldehyde, diacetyl, and triacetine. Yeah. Those, I can tell you right now from personal experience, are never achievable through vaping. Okay. And the reason that is is because diacetyl, uh, was also linked to formaldehyde, and so was triacetine. But also diacetyl was, we remember back in the, when the people worked in the popcorn factories, they got popcorn lungs. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, this won't happen. You have to run your mods, everything at a crazy high. What, the, what some of the studies done, and if, you were, and if you read some of these studies that are actually out there and do some research behind it as well, um, formaldehyde and diacetyl, were found in certain tanks if you achieved a wattage of high enough. And what I mean by that is, is that what they were taking was basic disposable tanks that use everyday use. And what they were doing was hooking it up to like car batteries and diesel truck batteries and burning it. Well, typically what's going to happen when something burns, it's going to let off a chemical. Yeah. But, you know, I, I've been doing this for three years. I've never had anything like that ever happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I feel so much better after vaping for so long. You know, I've, I was two cartons, two cartons a week. I was pretty bad, um, and I'm down to like two percent nicotine. This stuff has helped me immensely throughout the years. I I dipped heavily. I smoked cigars, cigarettes. I'll go through the carton every two days. Cam dip every week. Depends on what I was chewing on. Um, I'm down to three or six nick, depending on what I'm using. <laughs> um, like back to what I'm saying, series. I only use six nick. I did that wrong one day. He remembers it. Mm -hmm. ne never. I'm gonna warn you. Don't put six nick in a series mod or on a series build. And that, what and what he's talking about when he means series is what they're doing um, is they're creating higher own coils when they rebuild, and what they're doing is is that they're turning up the power to it. Most tanks and most RDAs are typically run at around 3.9 to 4.1 volts on your basic style coil belt. Um, with his, and for instance, his is built around a larger diameter, so it uh, wicks the juice more efficiently on there and does um, less burning of the cotton, or less heating up of the cotton. Um, and what it is, is you achieve more vapor yeah. out of it. It's more of the cloud chaser aspect behind it, in my personal opinion. Yeah. It's... 
in series builds and series mods, you really don't get much flavor out of them in my experience of it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It depends on what I'm building, what I'm running. Um, like from my VCM right now, I don't get flavor much. I get clouds for days. Um, I usually run about 3 or 2% nicotine on this. Was my go-to. Uh, so I, love my, I love series. I just got recently into spilling the series mod, I mean series um, builds. I've been testing out different RDAs, everything. So far, my top three RDAs, four series, is going to be, where you go? It's going to be the Buddha Mini by BCM. There's also the regular Buddha, which is the 26, 6, 26 650 version. Um, the Temple, I don't wish I don't have any more, was a great series build. Airflow, airflow for days. Then my third one it will be honestly, I won't say candy in my opinion because can people say oh candies are for flavors? I get clouds with my candy. I I that's all I use when I use cloud comps as candies as well for myself. Yeah, candies, love them. Shout out to the company who makes them. I can remember who, do you know who? who makes candies? Yeah. I can't remember. I apologize, I'm Kennedy. <laughs> We apologize. We can't um, remember, but we love your RDAs. I'm rocking it right now. He's using the version two, and then I've got the new 24 millimeter style with the airflow built on the bottom, uh, where it comes out the sides instead of direct underneath. Yeah. Um, great RDAs. Mm -hmm. Now for series, non-series, like if you're doing parallels, um, RDAs, my top three. You can put your input on them if you want to. Um, it's going to be my Sub Zero, which is a lot like a Kennedy, but more airflow. Um, I won't say my Glacier. Just picked this up today. Love it so far. I've not had any problems with it. I, though I did have an issue adjusting the airflow, but I got down to where it's just right. Then um, I went back to back about a year ago. Is when the Dark Horses came out? Yeah, Dark Horses. Dark Horses has always been infinite long time. Yeah. I've actually got one over here. Dark That's Horses. Dark Horse. Dark Horses, love them. Um, then other ones I've messed around with, and I do like, but I don't, I, in my personal per uh, preference, I didn't care for them that much. They were great RDAs. I had no issue with them, but I, they weren't fit to my needs and what my, I like. It was the Phenotype L. Love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. But great series, are you? Great series, but too much airflow. It it kills it out for me. Um, Velocity. Velocity. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, but it didn't make the cut for me. And uh, then what was this that came out this year? Twisted Messes. Shout out to them. Great RDAs. Um, then, what's your, what are your type? My top three of all time, and I know it's probably going to get a lot of crap for it, I love the turbo. I like a nice, um, cool vape, and the turbo allows me to build a lower resistance on it with still achieving a cool vape behind it, which yeah. um, a lot of people, you know, when Rip Trippers uh, did his review and said it vaping with Twisted 420, shout out to both y'all. I love you guys. Yeah, same here. Uh, when they originally did their reviews, uh, I feel... Um, you know, they were doing a lot of the whistling sound behind it. Um, there is ways to achieve that without making the cooler vape. Yeah. I mean, I had two turbos in my, I like them. It's just that fan, that high pitch. It sounds like a kazoo going off, don't you know I am not a big fan of that sound. I, I like them and all, but not my type. The, Another one I want to give a shout out to is the people that makes the Indestructibles. Uh, J-Bone. J-Bone and Wismac. Yeah. Same people who make the uh, new Wismac for low DNA 200s and the RX 200s. Yeah. Shout out to them. Awesome RDA. I love it. Mm -hmm. Very innovative post design, I must say, for you guys on that center post. I haven't seen something like that yeah, yet. Yeah, that's different. Um, Mod-wise, you want to go first for me? Uh, I'll go. Uh, my top two are there. Top two that I'm always drawn back to, and you know, especially in this north of Arkansas area, is my Rage Box. Um, I've used, I've had this thing for almost two years now, give or take. Um, 
you know, he makes a fantastic box. Yeah, Charles does. Shout out to Charles Long and all the gang at Ragebox. Love you guys. Um, my top mod, I'm, okay, I'm gonna say I'm a fanboy. A Vapor Clouds fanboy? Yeah, yeah Vapor Clouds. wrong with that. I love VCM. Shout out to y'all. Great mods, great RDAs. That's what my go-to is my VCM 18650, VCM stacked, and my VCM T. Love them. I've had them. I've had these for a long time now. Oh, except for this, brand new. Love it. And like we were saying, you know, there's tons of different stops. There's tons of, tons of different places around here, and. Uh, We'll go ahead and uh, later on we'll walk you guys through some of the shops around here and introduce you to, introduce to you some of the owners if we can get a chance to talk to some of them or some of the managers as well. Give you guys kind of the rundown of how uh, some of the popular shops are around here and yeah. what they have to offer in specificness of where and what they're aimed towards. Mm -hmm. um, Velvet is what we're representing today. I, I love them. They're like my top, they're my top three shops I go to. The number one in my, in my book. Um, really good in-house juice. Mother juice. Chang Rhonda, awesome people to talk to. Mm -hmm. Hands down. Um, I have a good selection of mods, box mods, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, probably um, best known for their house juice um, and just their customer service as well. Yeah. My favorite juice from the Fairy Dust. We love that fairy. Yeah, yeah I do. You get, I can't help it. No, that's fine. Uh, some of the more popular flavors are, let's see, let's throw a couple of them out there. Let's see, we, they've their number one flavor of Loyal and Royal. Which is named after one for point nine, John and Deke. Shout out to y'all. Awesome. Correct. The Loyal and Royal Army. Uh, awesome. Phantom Fruit. Um, awesome. Very great, very good Honeydew Melon style blend behind that one. Uh, if you like custards, Parker's Butter Custard is made by one of my fellow associates down at Velvet Vapor, David Parker. Um, also a good one, my favorite one's the blueberry honeysuckle with Bavarian cream. Ron has showed me that. I love it. <laughs> and I'm gone. I have one tip in all of it right now. And so I'm just I'm sadly getting close to the end of it. And we are to get more than that. Talking about your basic 18650, there are some do's and don'ts when it comes to 18650s. This yeah. So this is an up close view of an 18650. Uh, this is what we would consider in a vape shop a bad battery. Uh, that needs to be rewrapped at least. Um, and the reason that, that is is because typically when you look around, you know there's no scarring on the bottom. But the thing that draws a lot of issues is this right here. This is a tear in the battery. This is something that you definitely do not want to use uh, because it can cause a hard short if it touches the outside of the mod or I'll, anything like that. I'll also, auto fire because if you look inside there, it's all copper. It's going to cause it to pretty much fire on its own. Mm -hmm. But some of the key things you want to look for, um, you know, when you do routine checks on your battery, I always suggest to people that you make sure that the battery is checked every single time you pull it out. Um, you want to look for any nicks, scars, anywhere across the battery, rips and tears, um, any punctures or anything like that. You want to make sure it's going to be okay for you. You want it to be nice and flat and clean. Uh, make sure there's no uh, super head uh, scarring down here at the bottom, no protruding metal coming out. A big thing that a lot of people neglect to look at is this insulator ring here at the top. One of the things you want to make sure about it is that it's fully on there, there's no cuts in it, there's no exposed metal. That's the big thing. You don't want any exposed metal anywhere on any of this battery. So even though that this is such a tiny tear on it, you still don't want to use it uh, for pure battery safety. Uh, and the reason that is is, you know, it creates a hard short inside of a can. Um, be very dangerous if you're not taking a good look at your batteries. Yeah. Um, just I've, making sure that's all clear. You do not want this center pin here, which is your positive post, to be pressed in at all. It needs to be perfectly level and flat from the day that you bought it. If it's pushed in at all or any damage is done to anywhere here on the top of the battery, you need to recycle your battery. That's a new thing. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of hybrid top RDAs. Painting this off without taking out. Like this, they will tend to dim the batteries because it's straight that to your battery. It will, not all, all the time, but some of the time will cause it to dent. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing too, when it comes to battery safety, 
um, making sure if you own certain mods, such as, you know, a typical box mod, such as this one. That's unregulated. That's unregulated. You always want to make sure that your um, batteries are discharged the same and recharged the same. They need to become a married set. Um, and the reason that is, is, is it creates a safer environment for you because since they're coming and discharging the same and they're recharging the same. Yeah. And the reason that's such a big thing is because if you have one battery draining faster than the other one, by the time that you realize that this other battery is almost dead and it needs to be recharged, this guy could be dumped down. Yeah. And a dump cell is bad. The reason a dump cell is bad is because it, create, it weakens the structure of the internal battery itself and it can cause something called venting mm -hmm. um, to where the resistance and the structure integrity of the actual battery itself is not strong enough to hold the charge on the inside so it finds its point of least resistance yeah um. Um, but also talking about him and hybrid mods one of the things that you want to make sure you definitely don't do don't drop a mod well don't yeah don't do that um, since he's got his VC because he a VCM stacked or a hybrid mod um, okay. I'm going to on this one as well so, the big thing that he was talking about when it comes to hybrid mods is this piece right here. Since it is direct battery contact, see how the battery is sticking out? It makes direct battery contact on the top of here. Uh, one of the big things is, since it's an RDA system, it has um, not an enclosure. And it has a what is called a protruding 510 pin down here on the bottom. So it makes sure as it touches the bottom of the atomizer. And also don't put them in backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, always make sure your battery's going correctly as the manufacturer has instructed you to. Um, one of the big things that's been going on right now is people are taking hybrid mods such as these um, and putting tank systems like these on them. And also RTAs too. And RTAs as well. You never want to put a tank or RTA system on top of a hybrid style mod like oh, this. The reason is you don't want to put a top tank or tank system like this on top of a mod like this is because, like we were discussing before, if I can get this stupid tank off. Give me another tank, give me another tank. I'm, 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 I'm another tank. Okay, that'll work. So typically, like we were talking about, the reason you don't want to put a tank system like this, which this is a tank system, this is a meal of two, but this goes for any tank system, is because it doesn't have a long enough threading system to come out. And what happens is that the battery from the top travels the electrical current through here. Well, if this guy isn't have a far enough 510 extension pit on it, um, what happens is, is it shorts itself out and goes up through the entire base and recirculates the battery power back through the batteries, which causes a circulation which can cause venting. And then, but also, if you got something like this and range box where yours is went to, these are called, I wanna say Fat Daddy 10s or big, what are they called? 510 Fat Daddies. 510. 510 Fat Daddies. These are really good for um, um, tanks, RTAs, RTAs, RTAs. Basically anything that you put on is going to be okay to run on it um, because it's not direct battery contact. That's the problem people, a lot of people are having is that this is direct battery contact and that's what's causing a lot of people some issues, um, which is unfortunate. Um, most shop, all shops around here, as far as I know, of um, stress battery safety and you know just vaping and safe in general. Yeah. You know, it, it's a big thing. We always want people to vape safe and have fun, but you need to also make sure that you know what you're doing as well behind it. You. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this, comment, like, and subscribe. Leave comments about anything you have questions for us. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. And again, my name is Cameron. This is Wes. Um, and the way we're going to end this video today is by trying a random piece of juice that a friend of ours gave us. And this may or may not be a continuous thing. <laughs> but we figured do it as a kind of a joke thing as kind of our first video as well. Couldn't tell you what's in it, but we're going to smell it and then vape on it and tell you what it is. It smells like Robitussin. Again. It does. Uh, Robitussin. It smells it's like Robitussin mixed with bacon. <laughs> it does. I think there's like a little bit of tobacco hint to it. There might be. Oh, God. I'm going to... I hate this. No. <coughs> no. 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 Yep, that's Robitussin' that bacon. Oh. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> well, now that that's over with, um, again, my name is Cameron. His name is Wes. <laughs>